Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the element from point method within the JavaScript document object model. Okay, so this method right here is fairly straightforward in how it gets used. Uh, you're going to be calling it on the document object itself and it allows you to find the topmost element given an x and y position. Okay, so it also definitely has its own very specific use cases. Um, for example, I thought of, let's just say, you know, you have, you're integrating with some sort of external library and this library maybe doesn't support a particular functionality. You can possibly use this method right here um, to get around that and gain access to that functionality. Um, one more thing might be, uh, let's just say you're writing your own library and you need to know, you know, uh, which element is at which position in the document. Uh, you can of course use this method to of course retrieve that information. So um, it definitely has its own use cases like I said or very specific use cases. However, um, it can definitely come in handy. So uh, in this example right here, I have an outer div and I've got an inner div. Okay, so we're going to be using this method to, of course, uh, find these two elements given an X and Y position. Okay, so inside the text editor, we have something like this. As we can see, we've got the outer div and we have the inner div right here. I've also got some CSS styles to, of course, make them look like the way they do. Now, I've also got just down here, um, just a quick uh, set of code to essentially um, tell me the position of my mouse as I scroll around or move around the page. So as we can see, I'm simply listening for the mouse move event. And when the mouse moves, I'm saving my X and Y position into this variable right here, which means if I go back inside here, we can make use of Chrome's DevTools, um, particularly the Create Live Expression feature. And we can say inside here, for example, POS, so position, press enter or click away. And now we can see we get a live representation of the variable POS, which of course gets updated as I move my mouse. So now if I was to move the mouse around, we can see right there uh, that value gets updated. So with that being said, we can now essentially see if I was to hover over the outer div right here, we can see 210x and 268y is the position of my mouse, which means we can now go inside here and say document uh, dot element from point and pass through here. Um, let's just go back real quick. So that was uh, 179 and 296. So let's pass through here 179 and then 296. Now pressing enter, we can see right there we get the, the element in the console. So very straightforward, this method is gonna return you the element right there. Now what if I was to go inside here and instead pass through 98 and 288. So now I'm hovering over the inner element, okay? Let's try it out. I can say right here, 98 and then 288. And in this case right here, we can see we now get the inner in the console because of course, the inner element right here as part of these two is the top most. It is on top of the outer. So of course it gets returned. Okay, now what if I was to pass through, for example, something like 10,000, so something out of the actual page or um, something very far out from these elements? Okay, in this case, we get null. Okay, so it's going to return null um, if it can't find you an actual element. Okay, now one more thing I want to talk about, or one more thing is uh, going to be when using it in conjunction with pointer events none. Okay, so let's go back inside uh, the HTML right here and assign the pointer event CSS property here. We're going to be setting this to be none. Okay, so in this case, um, essentially, if you're not too sure, the pointer events property allows you to essentially just um, cancel um, any pointer events on um, an element. Okay, so in this case, um, now with this property, uh, this element can't be clicked on or hovered over. So let's see how it changes uh, how this method right here works. Okay, so let's go back inside here. 
refresh, and then try to call um, the same method on the inner element. Okay, press enter, and now we can see it goes straight through the inner and goes right to the outer right here. So of course, having pointer events none is going to essentially uh, make it so the element can't be selected through this method right here. And one last thing to talk about or mention here is going to be um, a second method, this one called elements from point. Okay, so let's try it again right here um, on the actual inner um, box right here. Let's change this to be elements from point. And in this case, we can see we get, I believe this is a node list, or sorry, it's actually an array. So we get an array of elements, okay, um, at that particular point. So we start at index zero from the topmost going uh, down to um, the bottom most, or, um, you know, obviously the element that's most behind. So of course, um, outer, then the body, then the HTML. So in this case right here, maybe um, you want to use the elements from point. Of course, it's going to be uh, depending on your own situation. Now, I want to mention also that elements from point um, is currently experimental. So maybe just be careful when using it in production. Okay, and that is the element from point method within the JavaScript document object model. Uh, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.